Um, all right, so we have five minutes to get through this. So I'm gonna give you just a little background. Um, the, um, there is a new test that we're offering, so in order to understand why that test is important, I'm just gonna give you a little background here. Um, starting with what is biofilm. So you guys may or may not have heard of this, but basically what biofilm is, is a collection of bacteria and mucus that can sort of reside on an epithelial surface, and it allows the bacteria to be resistant to the antimicrobials and treatments we use. Um, this is a problem in many species, in dogs with ear infections, in humans with cystitis, and what we're recognizing is that when these bacteria live within this biofilm state, they become very problematic to remove and resolve the infection. This is very in slow motion. So how does that affect the horse? Do we really have evidence, particularly from a reproductive standpoint, that there is such a thing as biofilm in the mare? Um, you may have heard some of your repro vets talk about different drugs that they're using to try to break up biofilm. And this is a study done by Ryan Ferris that very nicely showed, um, this picture isn't great, but there are these luminescent areas that basically are showing you pseudomonas that has created a biofilm on the uterus of a mare. So these were mares that were infected with pseudomonas and then pretty much aggressively lavaged and after several treatments they still had these pockets of infection that basically could not be removed and were consistent with a biofilm. So the answer is yes, we know this exists in the mare and it does seem to be a problem when we have chronically infected mares with bacterial endometritis. So what can we do about it? Um, there are so many different agents that we use in uterine treatments that have been shown to help break up biofilm in other species. Um, you may have had your vet use tris EDTA, acetylcysteine, DMSO. These are things that you've heard of people using in conjunction with their lavages to try to either break up mucus or hopefully allow those antibiotics to be more effective. And what's exciting is that this year, um, in conjunction with Ryan Ferris at CSU, who is the person who showed in the mare that we do have biofilm, we've developed an assay where we can actually take an isolate from a mare and look at the type of biofilm that she's building and then test the agents against her particular biofilm. And the reason this is helpful for us as your repro vets is if we have a persistent infection, and I'll use an example we had one of Dr. Brady Camp's cases had a very persistent yeast, and we tried many different um, traditional methods, vinegar lavages, betadine, and when we sent this off for this assay, it, f it showed that it was very sensitive to DMSO, and only through DMSO lavages could we resolve this infection. So really, without this assay, we would not have gotten the resolution and the results that we did. So we hope this is gonna be, and we're offering it currently. Um, I may, some of you may have already submitted samples, but our lab will be offering this this year, and we're really excited about this. It's not for every mare, but for these cases of chronic infection, hopefully it's gonna give us tools to more appropriately treat your mare. And this is, very quickly, I'm just gonna mention the other thing that we are starting to think about using is an assay for DNA isolation in the mare's uterus. So there are some, um, there's a lot of evidence in human medicine that there are many different bacteria that we don't isolate with traditional culture. And so when we're struggling to treat a mare and we suspect that there's something there, we now have this option of taking the fluid out of her uterus and looking at what DNA is present and then potentially changing our treatment plan based on what we isolate. Um, and the, the, um, this doesn't tell you the sensitivity, but it does tell you what living DNA is present in that mare's uterus. And we've looked at this in healthy mares and it seems that they don't have a lot of free DNA that's floating around. This is an example of um, one of the results that you get. So the test comes back and tells you if there's a low bacterial load, a moderate or a high load, and in all our normal mares, we're getting a low or no bacteria isolated, which suggests that in our problem mares, we would think we're gonna get higher um, numbers. So this is another assay that we can use for some of these tough cases.